Planing the first face of our board nice and flat, while not difficult, is the most demanding part of the process. Compared to planing the first face, the rest of the process is much easier. The next step in the process for making our cutting board is to plane one edge straight and square to the first face. And we want this edge to be nice and straight and square to this face of the board because we're going to glue another board to the edge of this board to make a wider panel. And we want that edge joint to be nice and tight and we want the resulting panel to end up nice and flat. However, as you're building your projects in the future, carefully consider the intended use for each board that you plane and whether or not that board really needs to be four square. You may find that as you go through building your projects that not every board needs to be plane perfectly flat and square on all four faces and edges. If you'd like more detail on this topic and about working more efficiently with your hand tools in general, check out the series of blog posts that I did on working efficiently with hand tools. After choosing which edge that I like to plane, just like with the face, I'm going to start by checking the current condition of the edge of this board. Now I can see by checking with my winding stick that this edge is hollow from end to end, so I'm higher on these two ends. And the edge is also not perfectly straight, or square rather, to the face of the board, which is not unexpected. This board happens to be out of square, high along this edge. So I'm going to start by squaring the edge to the face of the board, and this is going to be aided by the cambered blade in our jack plane. Because the blade is cambered, it's going to cut a thicker shaving at the center of the blade than it will out by the edges. You can see how that blade is projecting the most at the middle of the sole, and it tapers out to nothing. This is going to allow us to use that tapered shaving to bring our board edge into square. When I checked with my tri-square, this was the high corner. So by placing the center of the plane over that high corner, I'm taking the thickest shaving here. Now, as I'm doing this, I want to pay special attention not to create a hump in the center of the edge of the board. I don't want to plane this down so far or this corner that we've got a high spot in the center. So I do want to focus on planing the entire edge down. Um, and in fact, this board actually needs to be turned around in the vise because the grain is going in the other direction. So the edge that I started planing is now on this side. But as I mentioned, I also want to pay attention to the center so that I'm not planing a crown into the edge. And I'll adjust the thickness of my shaving as I plane so that I can be sure not to take too deep of a cut. Now what you can see is happening there is the plane is stopping, the cut is stopping. And that's because I've now used that cambered blade to create a hollow in the center. So when I check with my straight edge, I can see why it's not cutting. Now at this point, looks like my cut was a little too deep. And I actually cut this edge too far down below here. So I can use the thickest part of the shaving once again but this time with a reduced depth of cut and take this side down. And what I'm trying to do is gradually move the plane over with each pass once again so that I'm not creating that hump in the middle. And I'll make a few passes and I'll check with my square. And I'll continue this way, identifying the areas that are high and taking a shaving only from those areas, 
until I bring everything into square. Now, if you create a situation like I've done here, where you've now got a twist in the board, when I check with my square, this side is high on this end of the board and this side is high on this end of the board. So just like planing the face, I can plane there, come across with the plane, and plane this edge. Still need to come down here. Once again, I'm gonna take a few passes in the center so I can be sure that the edges are gonna be the highest points. Now I'll reduce the depth of cut again so that I don't go too far and don't overshoot because I'm almost at the point where I have a hollow in the middle from end to end. So I'm going to take a very light cut with this plane now so that I can just focus on the few remaining high areas. Now eventually, you're going to get to a point where the heavily cambered blade of that jack plane is going to be more detrimental than helpful. Because now we're getting to a point where I'm kind of chasing my tail a little bit with this cambered blade. This is normally the point where I would switch to a long triplane with a much less cambered blade but since we're not going to be using that plane as part of this course I'm just going to switch over to my smoothing plane which again has an almost flat blade and an extremely light cut and now I'm going to be able to refine the edge by taking off the high spots and flattening out the edge a little bit more because recall, the cambered blade is going to create a hollow down the center. So now I want to get this edge flatter than I could with the cambered blade. And the smoothing plane is really going to, to help me there. But once again, we want to be careful not to create a hump because that's going to leave us a gap in our joint. And because this blade has almost no camber at all, it's really going to help make this edge much flatter across its width. But at the same time, I don't want to plane the edge out of square. So I want to keep checking with my square to make sure I'm keeping it true. So the process of planing the edge square has likely already started making it straight from end to end as well. So after I've got the edge square, I'm going to check it with my straight edge to make sure that I've got it straight. If it's not, then I can set my plane for a very light cut and adjust the straightness of the edge as well. So if this edge is still concave, I can set my plane for a very light cut and plane from end to end. In my case, I've actually planed my ends a little bit too low and I've got a very slight high spot in the middle. So I'm going to focus on planing the middle down to try and bring things back to flat. And I'm not gonna touch the ends just yet. And again, I'm using a plane with a very light cut and almost no camber whatsoever. So that's going to help me to not take this edge out of square after I've worked so hard getting it into square. 
but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop checking it. I do want to confirm with my square that I'm keeping that edge nice and square. And I can check with my straight edge to make sure we're nice and straight. So the edge of this board is now nice and straight from end to end, and it's square to the first face that we planed. So with this board, we're ready to move on to the next step. However, I'm gonna repeat this process on a couple of other boards because I'm gonna be making a two-tone cutting board. So I need a couple of other pieces of wood that I can glue to this one to make a wider panel. So first, I'm going to repeat the process of planing one face nice and flat and one edge nice and square to that first face on a few other boards.